Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the concept of generate, propagate and kill signals at the bit level for an adder. Ok, let's get started. In the previous clip, we have seen the addition of two 4 bit numbers which are present here. This was my input A and this was my input B and my scene was equal to 0 and we saw that how each stage depends on the C out of the previous stage which becomes a scene of their stage and then finally starts its computation and hence it took a lot of time or in simple words the delay for ripple carry adder we implement the same in ripple carry and we saw that the delay was too, too, too huge. Presume that we have the 16 bit numbers where this is my input A and this is my input B and if every stage has to ripple its carry and then only the next stage can start its computation it will take a lot of time for the final C out and sum to come. And more importantly remember that we are more concerned with the final C out the simple reason being this C out is the one which is going to go to the next adder if any whereas the sum is just the final output which gives you the functionality. These are not ones this is the symbol for sum. So remember in an adder circuit what is going to be more critical is going to be your delay from scene to C out. Why did we say C out for the simple reason that this C out goes to the next stage or goes to the next adder. And for ripple carry adder we already saw that the final C out will come only when the last stage starts its computation because it depends on the scene of the previous stage which in turn depends on the previous stage which in turn depends on the previous stage and due to this rippling effect the delay was too huge. If you see here the 16 bit number A and B and if my scene is equal to 1 without doing this rippling effect I can straight away still say that my C out is equal to 1. How did I do this? It's very straightforward and that is nothing but the concept of generate, propagate and kill signal where each and every bit don't have to wait for their respective C ins and we can still predict the C out and how do we do this? Let's see. So here, here I've drawn the truth table for a full adder where it clearly shows that with different combinations of my A and B and C in, I get my corresponding C out and sum. This we have already studied in the lower semesters, this table, so I'm not going into the details of it. We all know this very well. Now look at the truth table properly and tell me if you can identify a case where your C out, C, basically what we are trying to do is we want to reduce our dependency on C in because that was a drawback in the ripple carry adder where every stage had to depend on its C in which came from the previous stage. So to avoid this dependency, tell me looking at the truth table, do you see any case where your C out is equal to 1 irrespective of your C in? If you see properly, you will come to know that the last case, last two cases where your A is 1 and your B is 1, your C out is 1 irrespective of your C in. Your C in can be a 0 or can be a 1, it does not matter, your C out is going to be equal to 1. So my carry is generated when my A is 1 and my B is 1 irrespective of my C in. Cool. So when my A is 1 and my B is 1, my C out is going to be always high irrespective of my C in or my C out is generated and this is the understanding of a generate signal. The generate signal is high if both my inputs are high. Very very simple and very straightforward. Let's go ahead. Here I have a propagate signal. Now let's understand what does this mean. Look at the truth table clearly and tell me if your A and B alternate, that is what I have written here, what if my inputs alternate, if your A and B alternate, what is going to be your C out? That will give me to this four cases, see A is alternating, B is alternating, A is alternating, B is alternating. Let's see each one in details. So when A and B are alternating, if you see here clearly that 
C out is equal to C in, C out is equal to C in. Let's see the other case as well. Here also A and B are alternating. So here also C out is equal to C in. Here also C out is equal to C in. So we understand that if my inputs alternate, my carry in is propagated or passed to the output. Very simple. If A is 1 and B is 0, it could be other way around also. If A is 0 and B is 1, my C out will be equal to C in. In this case, my C in is 0. So my C out is 0. If my C in would have been 1, then my C out would have been also equal to 1. Basically, my C out is equal to C in when my inputs alternate or I can easily say when my inputs alternate, my C in is propagated to C out. So this is nothing but my propagate signal. Very, very simple again. Let's go ahead. Why are we trying to do this? Because we want our adder to reduce the dependency on the carry which is coming from the previous stage. 